if I ask you to guess the best performing currency in the world, which one would you call? I'm pretty sure a lot of you would say the US dollars. Well, it's not the US dollars. This one says, anyways, let's get to the video. You'll see. You'd be surprised. I have a question for you now. What is the world's best performing currency right now? Your first guess might be the US dollar, perhaps the euro, Japan's yen, even the British pound. But let me tell you, all of these currencies are being outshadowed by this one, Outshadow. the Afghani. It's the currency of Afghanistan, the Afghani, and it's the top performer right now. The Afghani has beaten all other currencies. Its value shot up in the month of July, and since then it has grown by 9%. Hmm. This is against the US dollar, and this makes the Afghani the best performing currency in this quarter. What about this year? Not too bad. In 2023, its value has increased by 14% so far. The Afghani ranks third in the pecking order, right behind Colombia's peso and the Sri Lankan rupee. Now let's take a closer look at these numbers. Does After it mean the Taliban are doing very well out there? After the Taliban's return, the Afghani had collapsed. At the time, one dollar got to about 104 Afghanis. Hmm. And what's the value today? One dollar is worth about 78 Afghanis, so it's better than the Indian rupee. The currency has made a significant recovery. And how did this happen? Did the Taliban take a crash course in macroeconomics? Well, certainly not. But when they Probably seized did. power, they wanted to control the Afghani too. They wanted to control the currency, so they came up with some rules. The Taliban announced a ban. A ban on the US dollar and the Pakistani rupee. Locals were not allowed to use them, and transacting in these currencies was banned. In 2021, all foreign currencies were declared illegal in Afghanistan. So now the Afghani is the only option for the people there. If you want to buy something from the local markets, that's what you use, the local currency. Earlier this year, more restrictions kicked in. The Taliban once again targeted the US dollar. They imposed an export cap. People leaving Afghanistan could only take a certain amount of dollars with them, and the restrictions were very specific. If you're crossing by the land border, you could take up to $500, 500 US dollars. If you're flying out of an airport, you could carry up to 5,000 US dollars. These new rules apply to online trading as well. In 2022, the Taliban banned online forex trading. And you have to hear the reason for this. The Taliban said forex trading is against Islam. Full marks for creativity. At this rate, the Taliban could give China's Communist Party a run for their money. And they did not stop at the statement, by the way. They released a video to drive home the point. It was shared by Afghanistan's Reserve Bank. It showed two men in a boxing gym. While throwing punches, they're discussing forex trading. And how it's against the Muslim faith. That's what they're discussing here. Forex now, trading is, is really against the Muslim faith? It's like a real thing? I didn't know that. It's my first time hearing that had a ripple effect foreign currencies became scarce in afghanistan their circulation dried up and people started using the afghani which is why its value is increasing so this is not some master stroke the surge will plateau and it doesn't change the fact that afghanistan's economic situation is dire there is rampant unemployment two-thirds of the households here cannot make ends meet and the Taliban is in no position to help. It doesn't have a lot of money to start with. How do they run the economy? Mostly through economic aid. The United Nations has tried to help since the end of 2021 for a period of 18 months. Aircraft carrying large stacks of cash were sent to Afghanistan. Do you know how these deliveries, how often these deliveries were made? Nearly every week. And how much money did the Taliban get? We don't have an exact number, but going by some claims, the UN delivered up to $40 million every week to Kabul. Hmm. Why was this money transported in planes? Because the banks cannot do it. Afghanistan cannot access the global banking system, which is why the cash is moved in planes. And what did the Taliban do with this money? Once it was transported to Kabul, the dollars were converted into the Afghani, that's the currency of Afghanistan, and then it is released into the market. So you could say the UN also had a hand in propping up the Afghani. In a way, they're supplying US dollars and buying Afghanis in exchange. Despite all of this support, the economy is a mess. Before Kabul fell, Afghanistan had at least $9.5 billion in reserves. Now this money is frozen. The US and its allies cut off Kabul's access in 2021. 
It ha happened right after the Democratic government fell. Now, recently, Washington said it will release some of these funds, but then the plan was put on hold. The U.S. found that Afghanistan's central bank is not independent. Washington had concerns. Who controls it? It feared that the money could end up in wrong hands, that there are no checks and balances, anti-money laundering controls, or safeguards against terror financing. This should not be surprising. After all, a terror group is running this country. What else did the U.S. expect? So the Taliban will keep asking for more aid while millions of Afghans continue to suffer. Usually, a strong currency is a source of national pride. But for the Taliban, a strong Afghani is like having a gun that won't shoot. <laughs> okay, that was a punchline right there. Yeah, when I saw the, th the title, Afghani beats dollar, I mean, I was excited. I thought, oh, the currency is doing well, the economy is probably doing well. But it turns out it's just the currency doing well, but it's not enhancing the economy. That's surprising to me. Well, let me know what you think about that. Um, I, I, I would want the people, you know, I'm always advocating that the people have a good life wherever they are. But it seems from what she said in the video, two thirds of the population cannot make ends meet. That's very sad. That's very, very sad. 40 million, even with 40 million dollars sent every, that's not even a lot of money, actually. I mean, it's a lot of help. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of help to give to somebody, but also for a nation, a nation's consumption is not a lot of money. So the nation might have to start making and generating their own revenue in order to sustain its own people. Anyways, let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think. Feel free to share your thoughts. If there's anything you want to add, correct, or critique in the video, please, you know, do so in the comment section. That being said, smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.